is a 31 year old gentleman from Canada who was first diagnosed with uh, Tourette syndrome at the age, age of six years of age. And we are going to film him this morning showing the various physical and vocal tics that he has. And he's a very intelligent young man and he's going to explain if he wants to as we go along uh, the various tics. So why don't you just start at the beginning and just go for, for the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay? So look in the camera. No, look at me. Okay. Hello. Should I talk some? What was the first tick you had when you were six years? Oh, okay. Yeah, I. Huh? I mean, oh, <laughs> this is the thing that I find it difficult when I have a conversation. This tick comes out and then cuts the conversation. I feel sorry to the other person that I'm talking to. Anyway, the. Oh, oh. It was like um, when I was six or seven years old. Uh, according to my mom, I started like um, walking a little funny, like a little one side jumping and stuff like that. And even when I ride bicycle, like something like I would drive with one hand, not intentionally, but <laughs> something like that. But first symptom that occurred was walking funny in one in one leg. And then it started, it, in, it increased or it, get, it got worse by like uh, doing my eyes, something like this. And I, I do this all the time. And in my age of 14, so there was so much facial grimace and movement. Oh, oh, oh. I kept on have to move like this way so I can hear popping sound. But the popping sound, it need to be like in a way that would actually satisfy my urge. Yes, for example, I heard the popping sound, but it wasn't exactly in a way, way all the trap syndrome people would know it. Like, not if it's not in a way like the, you want to do it, then I have to do it over again, and that and then it relieves my urge for like for a few seconds, and I have to do it again. So I did, and doing like this, and I did so much of um, on my some 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 like doing this thing with my toes. And actually one of my toe has been like um, shaped funny, it's like um, it's kind of little distorted something so it's kind of yeah it looks a little not so good yeah and the twenties and it get, it kind of grow worse and especially during when I got stress and uh, when I when I think some stuff sometimes they are the thoughts that that I wanted to think and sometimes there are thoughts that I didn't even think that I would think of those stuff and it just comes out as, as just like acting on what I'm thinking which I didn't mean to and uh, and of course some some stuff that socially were not accepted like for example if I I really hate to see girls wearing some kind of mini skirt you know, tough stuff like that because I keep on seeing that, like I keep on trying to see their legs, stuff like that, but I really don't want to, I know people would hate it, but I don't want to, but that's the exact thing that I have to do it. So that was, that bothered me so much. Unfortunately, I didn't say a lot of bad words that occurred in many threat syndrome people. But I sometimes do, but I do in a way that other people can't recognize. So, so that's it. Yeah. And it disturbs a little so much of my reading, studying. Well, yeah. That's it. What, what do you do for a living now? Well, I took a nursing course. But however, since I have to go through another process, in, because I'm in other country now, I'm working as a special care aide. Special care is some like uh, helping old people in the <coughs> home, and also work in the hospital, filling some stocks. Well, that's very good. That's very good. Do you have a university? I do. Do you have a university yeah. degree? I do. Which yeah. university? Uh, it's in Philippines, uh, Saint Mary's University. Oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. This is the young man that you saw yesterday. We've delivered his appliance about five minutes ago, and already he says his urges are about 40% less. 
we're going to see him again tomorrow. Is it the morning? Uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, and we'll check and rebalance the appliance and do any fine tuning that's necessary after he's worn it for about 24 hours. Uh, this gentleman has now had his appliance a total of 24 hours. And you can see that his uh, movements and his vocal tics are greatly decreased. In fact, his wife estimates they're approximately 80% decreased uh, in the 24 hours that we've had the appliance in. And he will address the audience now and uh, give you some more information. Okay. Just tell them oh. how you feel. Oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, my wife says like 80%. And to me, to me, like I, the biggest impression that I have is that I have a little more control over my urges. Like before, once the urges coming, I basically can't really control. So I just have to do it. So, but then now I have a little more control, and I believe that I've been having this stress syndrome like more than 20 years. So it's been quite some time. So I expect that as I get used to our, to this appliance. It will, I, I will be improving more about that. And my previous experience about how they approach to to heal or to cure my trust syndrome was, I, I've done basically everything, if you, you name it, I've, been, I've done everything, medication, behavioral therapy, and all kinds of tests, I've done everything. Like, And I, I was hospitalized in the mental hospital for 18 days and everything, but then, those medications or like side effect of those psychotic medications were like killing me. I would rather have like uh, that threat syndrome than like being not myself but because of side effect of that they caused. So I was really impressed with this fairly uh, quite safe treatment and it is showing some improvement or some effect on me after 24 hours. So, yeah, I was quite impressed with this, and I expect some more improvement continuously. And I thank Dr. Stack about it. <laughs> okay, would you like to say something? Yeah, come around here behind him. This patient returns after seven weeks of wearing his lower repositioning appliance. Zero in on his mouth. Okay. Okay, okay. stringent sheets. This is the position in which we have it today. We have resurfaced it to make it a little bit taller, approximately one to one and a half millimeters taller, to compensate for the wear uh, that he has done in the past seven weeks. You can see the difference in his symptomology between then and now. Okay, relax. You can relax. Put your lips together. Just look in the camera. Okay, okay. This is this gentleman's wife, and she wants to say something to the viewing audience. Okay. Um, well, the, the first time he's had the appliance, I saw a lot, a great difference. He would be, it was the very first time we went out for shopping, and he didn't really have a lot of vocal tics, a lot of moderate tics. He usually have like a lot of it but yesterday it was like every I would say like every half an hour he would have it and it's a lot improvement he would usually have it like in a minute he would have his ticks like five times in in one minute but yesterday it was just like every half an hour to every four minutes. Then you were counting that. I was. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like I'm very hopeful for this appliance even when we're just together um, it's it has shown a lot of difference, and it I'm pretty sure it's making him more comfortable and lesser, like less tired and stuff. And I'm very help. I'm very hopeful that this appliance would really work. The last the last doctor we met, the neurologist, told me, you know what, this disease doesn't kill you. Why don't you adjust a little bit? Li learn how to live, live with it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was yeah. No. <laughs>